My three word summary of that game is coming home. England just beat Iran 6-2 in their World Cup opener and it was phenomenal. A lot of people were hyping up Iran that they'd done well in recent internationals and stuff and that they should be one to watch out for. But England absolutely obliterated them with a plus four goal difference after the first game. Really, really good start to the World Cup. Southgate setting the team up differently in a 4-2-3-1 is what we've basically all wanted to see for ages. So we had Pickford, Trippier, Stones, Maguire, Shaw, Bellingham and uh, Rice as the two. And then a three behind Harry Kane of Saka, Mount, Sterling and then Harry Kane up front. Bellingham gets us underway with a beautiful header uh, after uh, a cross from Luke Shaw. However, this was not the first major event of the game. Couple of minutes in, Harry Maguire is rugby tackled from a corner and somehow it's not a penalty. Now, you might be able to say that, oh, okay, fine, poor decision. Kind of doesn't add up with what happened later on though. So, absolutely robbed of a penalty. Then, the Iranian goalkeeper had massive problems and could barely stand up or walk. Uh, it, it, it was just an absolute mess. There's no way that the medical team should have even tried to get him to keep continuing and play. It was ridiculous, really. So he ended up having to be subbed off. This meant we had 14 minutes added time in the first half, by the way. Absolute madness. Uh, but yeah, all of that happened. Bellingham gets us underway really, really nice after Maguire had hit the bar as well. Uh, he actually had an okay game today. Uh, Saka managed to get a goal um, just before half time, 44th minute, uh, with a really, really nice uh, volley. May have had a slight deflection, but beautiful strike nonetheless. And then Raheem the Dream Sterling, 3 0. Uh, very, very comfortable at this stage. Start off the second half. Saka, boom, you absolutely love to see it. Beautiful, puts us 4-0 up and we are cruising until a few minutes later Taremi scores. It's actually quite a nice goal, reverse pass. People are calling out Maguire, but I, I think it's a bit harsh because the pass was so good and so precise. Plays it through to Taremi, first time finish. Uh, Pickford tries to get to it but can't quite. In off the crossbar. Really, really nice goal by them, to be fair. But we bounce straight back because we made a triple substitution. Foden, Grealish and Rashford all came on. And Rashford scored about 45 seconds after being subbed on. Incredible scenes. Uh, and then Grealish managed to get a goal late on as well. Beautiful ball through to Callum Wilson, who came on as a sub later on for Kane uh, by Bellingham. My goodness, what a player he is. Wilson driving at the goalie, could be selfish, could go for goal, try and get that World Cup goal uh, that everyone always wants, but decided to be an incredible team player, cuts it back, Grealish scores, and then he does the celebration um, uh, that the fan wanted him to do, which was awesome to see. Unfortunately, it didn't end 6-1 though, Iran get a late penalty. Now this is where things don't really add up. I personally think this was a penalty. If you are pulling someone's shirt back, it's a foul no matter where it is on the pitch. John Stones has his arm behind his back in order to grab a shirt like this. It's a foul. Uh, this was given as a penalty, which again, I think is fine. But Maguire was literally rugby tackled. How, like, the most blatant penalty decision you'll probably see all tournament not given. Madness. So Taremi does manage to get a brace uh, for Iran today by scoring the penalty, sending pick for the wrong way. They could have scored just before that as well. Uh, John Stones with a little bit of an error. And Pickford made a massive save when Asmoon was through on goal, tried to sort of get it over him. But Pickford just... Fingertips as he's diving, tips it onto the bar. Fantastic save. Now let's look through some of the stats right here. Here is everything as it happened. Uh, let's get down to the ratings. So, uh, what do we get actually here? Kane, no goal uh, today, but two assists. Gets an 8.5. Saka with a 9. Bellingham, 
My goodness. He was probably my man of the match. Uh, Saka, yeah, kind of fair, but I think I would have given it to Bellingham because with this system that we're currently running in a 4-2-3-1, you have Rice as your like, out-and-out -out defensive mid, but also good on the ball, which is really good. Bellingham's just like a deep-lying playmaker. You get the ball to him, and his first thought is, how can I get the ball forward? Whereas with someone like Rice, yeah, you'll see that occasionally, but he will play it safe a lot more often and like pass it back to Shaw or Maguire or something like that. Whereas Bellingham instantly wants to turn, fire it into Mount or Saka or whatever. And so I thought he was phenomenal today. The fact he's still 19, my God. We have some incredible young players. It's amazing. Uh, Taromi gets an 8.6 for them uh, and the rest not too great. <clears throat> Stats down here. They actually had very similar expected goals to us, which is pretty nuts, to be fair. I mean, Saka's goal, yeah, um, not very likely. I expect that the Asmoon chance was probably higher XG than Taremi's first goal, to be honest with you. Uh, so that's not too surprising. The passing stats are pretty nuts. And the thing is with this, we played more forward passes than normal. And again, I think that's one good thing about having Bellingham in the team. You also had Kane dropping deep to like the halfway line at times to then play it forward. There's a reason why he got two assists but not a goal today. He's like a playmaking striker. It's bizarre, but it was awesome. And yeah, obviously dominant in possession is not too surprising right there. Uh, here are the other stats as well. Expected goals uh, in the second half. Iran actually won that one. There you go. Absolute scenes. Uh, I, I still don't really understand what this last stat is, but it doesn't matter. Uh, passing stats, 90% pass accuracy compared to 66% is a big summary of this game. They just didn't look that good on the ball, whereas we looked fantastic. I think it was Bellingham in the first half, didn't misplace a single pass. Neither did Mason Mount as well. Just calm and composed. And you can see how many of the passes are in the opposition half. This is a big stat right here. Uh, accurate long balls is nice, crosses as well, not bad. Uh, tackles, we were pretty good defensively today. Not too shabby, Maguire um, w was decent today. Trippier as well. Uh, Luke Shaw obviously got the assist. Uh, Jules were not too bad. They were slightly better at aerial jewels, but it doesn't matter about that. They had zero successful dribbles. We had 11. Decent. I mean, Jack Grealish got fouled like five, six times after he came on. But yeah, so they gave Saka, Bellingham and Kane uh, the top three in this game, which I, I think is kind of fair. Uh, they, were, they were very, very good, especially Bellingham, man. And I, I feel like this is a big, big step for England if Southgate is brave enough to use this formation against the better teams. Because what we've seen in the past is as soon as we come up against, I don't know, Spain, Germany, something like that. So I got distracted by the host of the ITV uh, stuff. Um, we just go back to a back five and we shouldn't do that because this is how you get the most out of the England squad. The only change that I think I'd really make is matters for Mount. When he's fit, definitely no bias. Uh, but I just think that he offers a little bit more uh, than Mount there. Maybe you could say, I, I think Foden over Sterling makes sense in games where you don't need as much pace. Or the pace will be nullified. For example, against USA, both of their right backs are really, really quick. And so Sterling may not get as many opportunities, whereas Foden, more technical on the ball, can create space a bit more. That would be a change that I'd be open to seeing. I think the rest of the team is perfectly fine. I don't see any reason to change anything right now. And this is the perfect starting block to then Friday against the USA just build on this and go forward and get another three points and just be sat top of the group, comfortable, ready to bring it home. So, fair play today. We were very, very good. And I was very impressed uh, with how we played, uh, especially, again, considering what some people were saying about Iran leading up to this. Uh, I wonder if it actually says at the bottom uh, here, 
uh, yeah. So um, this was one of the big results that everyone kept going on about. And this one, drawing against Senegal and beating Uruguay, uh, whereas we had <laughs> lost to Italy, the 4-0 to Hungary. I was in Portugal for that game. That was dreadful. Uh, but yeah, 6-2. There's not much more to say other than it is coming home. We're incredible. And I can't wait for Friday. It's going to be fantastic. So thank you very much for watching. I will see you again very soon. We may do a review of some of the other games that happened today. I'm not entirely sure. But for now, thank you for watching in a bit.